This episode of Not Another Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports app and esports app that eliminates the countless hours of research typically involved with fantasy sports and focuses only on the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. All you have to do is choose five out of the 10 available player props or 10 out of 20 if you're playing an NFL game to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both the over and the under based on how likely it is to hit, hit the most props, rack up the most points, and win a share of the prize pool. It is just that simple. Thrive has awarded over $1.5 million in prizes to this date. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I don't know who else is telling you this, but I think it's more than that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say 5 million cash prizes. Don't fact check, but I'm pretty sure I'm, it's, it's a hunch. So to start racking in the dough, use promo code WGG when you sign up today, right now, right now, promo code WGG, and you'll receive an instant $50 match, $50 match, no longer 25. You deposit $50. You get yourself a free $50 in return. We are handing you free money free money so get started today use promo code wgg via the thrive fantasy app on the app store or google play store or by visiting their website at thrivefantasy.com once again promo code wgg go download the app and hashtag prop up with us today now without further ado i need to get my inhaler you could join us for episode 210 of not another gaming podcast because we're live we're direct we're coming to you right now in your beautiful ear holes. What is going on? What's up, gamers? Doc Bob here. We're live. We're coming to you live. You know, it's a Wednesday. We got we got some big plans for tomorrow, so we had to do it today. Uh, we're gonna be doing some co-stream live streaming of the TGAs tomorrow night. Uh, we got approved for it. We got a big old thumbs up. So we had to record the podcast tonight, and we're here. Live 210, not another gaming podcast. Bro, it's fucking December of 2020. I woke up this morning thinking it was still April. I don't know what the fuck happened. But again, I am here with my two beautiful co-hosts. Dom, Chris, how you guys doing? I'm doing good, Bob. Thanks for having me this evening. I'm very, very excited to be here. Long week. But you know, I get to sit down with two of my best buds tonight. Just chop it up. Talk video games. Talk the industry. And I could not be happier. But it's your boy, Chris P, the tallest and the lankiest. Dominic, how's it going, brother? I too am doing fantastic. Uh, just you know, feeling good, ready to ready to wrap up the week as always. I mean, you know, obviously we're just a, only only at the halfway point here, but feeling good nonetheless. Uh, you know, and and in any case, you know, we got a, got a lot of content coming at you this week. We got a lot of it's going to be a lot of a lot of talking, a lot of videoing, potentially a lot of drinking, probably a lot, most likely. A lot of drinking, and uh, yeah, just just ready to ready to get it started. Hell yeah! Nice to see you, Dom. You 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 looking good? I like the bad the background. The Christmas lights are flying around there. Holly just, jolly, you know, you see the flannels, you see the Christmas lights. You know, we got dude. You setting the mood for me to come over tomorrow? What's going on? Ooh, you know that. You know Damn, that. What's These up? lights Can't... are not getting any brighter than this. Damn, you're about to pull out the age Chianti. Maybe a little charcuterie board for the boy, a little super sa, you know? You know what I mean? I'm going to order an Italian can sub, split wait. it in half, and just empty it onto a two by four for you. Chris, oh, can yeah. you spell any of those words? Soprasata, S O P P R O S A T A. That might be right. I, I don't know. I, th- I, think that, I think that is actually right. I've seen it spelled this one? like 18 different ways. How about this one, Bob? Um, hold on. Let me try to spell something else in that. S U C K space M Y space D I C K exclamation point. Suck my dick. Great. Now I'm, so gl- I'm so glad you could read that out loud for us. Thank you so much. Cool. Your reading level is improving by the day. And I'm just really see I'm just really glad to see you grow. Thank but you. But why don't we we got a lot to talk about this week and we got a lot to talk about tomorrow. So I believe Chris and uh, Dom are both going to be live at the the uh, the Utah compound uh, up north in the Utah compound. Yeah. In the, in the I, however, tundra. yep, I, however, have to be remote because I have to go into work and be on coverage on Friday. So I can't drink excessively like I would like to. But we're going to be covering the TGAs tomorrow. There's going to be a lot coming from that. But we also get a lot to talk about tonight. But before we do that, why don't we do a little weekend recap? 
Damn, son, where'd you find this? I played a lot of Counter Strike this weekend. I stayed in. I tried to play. I tried to stay like super, super low profile this weekend. I worked maybe like sixty hours last week. Uh, I got fucked a lot from work, so I needed to catch up on sleep. Other than sleeping, I played a lot of Counter Strike. I started playing a little bit more Valorant recently, and hmm. I think that's it. I think honestly, I think that's it. I'm gonna. I still get a couple more uh, games. I gotta dig through. I'm just trying to figure out what single player game I want to play next. Maybe I'll finally beat Doom Eternal. Maybe I'll play like Mario Odyssey or something. I don't fucking know. Ooh, good one. I was thinking about playing it today, but I had to. Again, I got a shit ton of fucking work today. But uh, yeah, I didn't do much this weekend. Drank, played a lot of Counter Strike, played some Valorant. That was about it. What about you guys? I, I laid load this week, I think. Tom, I didn't see you this weekend, right? I'm going back to the old me right now. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't see you this no. weekend. Yeah, then I stayed in. I didn't do anything. Um, I, oh, I remember exactly what I did. We got a little snow. Ended up going to the liquor store around the corner. I was feeling festive, so I bought some spiked eggnog. I was going to make some coquito because at least I had it in my head from last week. But I decided that I was not going to just because I do not have a blender and you have to you have to have one of those apparently to yeah. make it. We didn't see each other because you texted me on f- Saturday and you were like, "I want to make coquito," uh, and then like twenty minutes later you were like, "All right, I think I have everything." I just found out I don't have a blender though, and I was like, "Okay." And he was like, "Can you bring your blender over my house?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> no, don't but don't I, expose me." I didn't. I say was that. like, "I am cooking though. I am cooking dinner. So if you would like dinner, and you." want to come over and use my blender you can i'll give you i'll serve you some delicious dinner and you can let me try some of this coquito and it'll be fine um but that didn't happen because chris didn't want to go outside he didn't realize it was dark you know you could buy a blender for like 40 bucks right yeah but i would have had to buy a blender in the in the middle of a snowstorm just to make a drink for the night it wasn't 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 hardly even snowing out no it was it was pelting outside you couldn't even see my hand in front of my face it was fucking nuts out there no it no 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 it downpoured friday night and then there was a little bit of snow afterwards there was there was a good amount of snow weather man there was a good amount of snow i got a ton up here yeah i I got fucking crushed i i no, not, yeah. Not, yeah, not by me in fucking uh, Naples, Florida. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't get moved. that much snow. Yeah, I just moved again, sorry. Nice. sorry. But yeah, That's so, why I can't make it tomorrow. I just moved to Naples, Florida. True. It's all right. Bonjour. I uh, don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, I'm all over the place. But yeah, I did. I ended up buying some spiked eggnog. Hold uh, on, hold on. Chris stops, stops, stop. What country do you think Naples resides in? Italy. Okay. And what language does bonjour uh stem from? it's french that's why i said i don't know where my mind was at right there i just said bonjour i almost like kiss my fingers too i don't know um let me say what i did this weekend for fun <laughs> so but but the spiked eggnog went into the went into the living room i was like you know what it looks a little bit out here i'm not really kind of backing up what i say about having the most christmas spirit on the east coast because the christmas tree is not up so I was like, all right, I got to put this bad Larry up. So I went downstairs, got it, put it together. I have a fake tree, I know. But you know, as someone who lets things expire, the last thing I need is a tree, a real tree in my living room. Fast forward to August of 2021, and there's animals and there's flies because, you know, damn well, I'm not getting rid of the thing. Too much work. Put that up, had a little more eggnog, sat down, played some video games, had the Christmas music bump, and Michael Buble only because you're aware of the vibes. You know, if it's not Michael Buble, I don't want to hear it. Uh, as for what I've been playing, played a good amount of Fortnite this weekend, believe it or not. I'm so sick of every other game. And my buddy was just like, you guys want to like play the new season of Fortnite? So I go, yeah. And it was a good time. Granted, you shoot at one of these like little nine-year-olds. You put one bullet into their back and they turn into the Eiffel Tower. So there's nothing you can do there. But I was having fun. I was trying to do what I can. My hands just don't work that way anymore. But all in all, it was a really good weekend, nice and low-key. Uh, but yeah, that was mine. Uh, I would love to hear how Dom's weekend was, Dom. Can you please uh, tell me how your weekend was? My weekend was great. I just want to walk back a little bit and just um, just recite for you the text that I got from Chris in order uh, on how this Coquito uh, operation went down. So let's see. Saturday at 3 o'clock, and I was cooking dinner by this time. I made some delicious French onion soup, 
it was rainy, it was cold, it was like still kind of snowing a little bit up here um, on like 3 o'clock on Saturday, so I made some unbelievable French onion soup. Absolutely fucking scorched the roof of my mouth, just decimated my entire head. Um, it was great. Um, just just absolutely, probably the best I've made. I've made it like three or four times, um, and this is probably the best the best time yet. We even got like little ceramic crocs to put it in. Just absolutely Absolutely. Are they called uh, ramekins? Is that what they're called? Like the wait, little ones? You put it, wait, you put it, the onion soup in shoes? Yeah, yeah, and it comes out the top. That's like, but you put the Gruyere cheese on the top so that it of keeps the, the soup from coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they do it in Australia. Those and are shoes, you put it, but it's yeah. French onion soup. In it, yeah. And then you put it in the broiler for like five minutes and it like crusts over. Woo! Unbelievable. Um, so then Chris texts me, my good pal Chris, at 3 37 p.m. I might make Coquito. It's been going through my head since Thursday. And I was like, oh my God, if you do bring some by. You should just message Elisa for her recipe. And he goes, I actually might do that. It's pretty straightforward from what I'm seeing, though. Silence for five minutes. Five minutes later, God damn it, I don't have a blender. <laughs> I said, of course you don't. That's a very important component. I have a magic bullet, but then my proportions will be all fucked up. I mean, it's true. Come by with your blender, Chris says to me. And I said, no, come by here and make it so I can have some. <laughs> he was like, I'm in my kitchen getting blitzed right now. I might just, I just realized it's snowing and I'm probably going to stay in. I was like, Chris, how the fuck did you just notice that? And he's like, this is my first time looking outside in three hours. Dude, I shit you not. Same thing happened to me. I yeah, had right? no, dude, I had no idea it was fucking snowing out until I, but I had to get something out of my car and I just, or I, yeah, I creased my door open. I was like, what the fuck? And I just closed it and I went back inside. I didn't need to get it out of my car anymore. Dude, uh, I mean, I, I'm sitting at my desk. My blinds are shut because I'm a hermit. And I get up. I stretch the back out a little bit after I'm talking to Dom. Like, hell yeah, let's go make this excellent Puerto Rican drink. And I look outside and, and there's eight feet of snow on the ground. I'm, I can't do anything. Nothing I can do. It's like six inches of snow. But otherwise, uh, did a lot of DIY work. I uh, we finished some some projects around the house. It was basically like two straight straight weekends of like no rest. Um, just like worked a ton around the house and got some projects done. Um, I did get some time in with Shadowlands. I've been playing that quite a bit. Uh, me, Ken, and Steve have been uh, doing some tent together with that. That's been really fun. Um, really enjoying that. I also reinstalled uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic because. On Tuesday, yesterday, uh, was patch day, and I was like on my lunch break, and, and the servers were still down, and I, I realized that I downloaded the Old Republic, and I just was like kind of dying for like a Star Wars fix, and I started playing it, and it was pretty fun. Uh, the last time I played it, it stunk, and uh, there must have been some updates, some quality of life updates that were really good, but I'm sure I'm going to drop absolutely everything uh, after the new Elder Scrolls Online expansion gets announced tomorrow at the TGAs. I'm fucking hype for that. Uh, cannot wait to see what that is, but I am going to be playing. Shadowlands is going to be getting the majority of my attention until that happens. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was me. And, uh, yeah, I made French onion soup and I bought a bunch of Christmas gifts. Um, oh, I got my nephew, uh, I put a blog up on wickedgoodgaming.com. The 25 days of Wicked Good Christmas are coming out. Uh, the blogs are out, um, every day for the last couple days, every day, basically in December, a new blog, a new holiday themed gaming blog. Um, today's was about how, how I would have killed as a child for Mario branded toys. And, uh, I bought the story came from, because I bought these Mario Kart Hot Wheels tracks for my nephew. For I bought, I bought the same ones. I bought the same exact ones. Fuck yeah. So, I literally, so my, I was talking to my sister about it, and she's like, you know, he really likes car. That he's getting into cars, um, you know, uh, but I know he loves Mario Kart. Like, we play it every time he comes over. And I saw on Target, they got, uh, there was, like, two different tracks. There's, like, Bowser's Castle, and then there's a regular one. And then there's, like, these huge multi-packs with, like, 10 or 15 different, like, races. So I bought everything that they had. I was like, fuck it. They had a bunch of coupons. It was like, oh, 25 off 100, you know, 10 off 25. I'm like, pfft. I'm ordering all of these because I'm going to play with them too. So I can't wait for that. I'm just very much looking forward to it. I, um, I've um i been contemplating going back and replaying through Jedi Fallen Order again. Ooh. But I but I 100% of the game on the hardest difficulty. And I don't know what else I can do besides try to speed run it. 
They have that new um they have new game plus in it now. Just, I mean even yeah, though you but... even though you even though you 100 percent of it, they have new game plus in it and then they they have like a new arena challenge mode thing. Yeah. They drop maybe. for it. I've been thinking about going back to play that or I still haven't played Knights of the Old Republic. And that's another game that's on the backlog that I completely forgot existed. Uh, and I don't know if I have a hundred hours to put into that, but yeah, I'm, Hey, I'm looking forward to being really upset tomorrow night when Jedi Fallen Order gets snubbed for a game of the year. So oh, I can't wait to scream at my TV. Um, anyways, Dom, you wanted to talk about, I mean, you made a bunch of meals this weekend, you know, you made some French yeah. onion soup. Oh, here's a soup. Uh, I like it. I, I did a bunch of streaming. Uh, if we were together, you could have made a bunch of French onion soup for a streamer. Um, but there was something else you wanted to talk about when it came comes to like meals for streamers or something like that. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, Wendy's has just introduced their new Never Stop Gaming menu uh, on Uber Eats, which partners with various Twitch streamers, um, and that can I think can can earn you uh, various prizes if you end up buying into it. So I think it was T Few. Is it T Few or T Fu? Or Tifu. Tifu, yeah, Tifu. Um, well, don't old man, don't smile Dom. at me. I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't. I don't care who these people are. So there's Tifu, Flight, It's Hafu, X Choco Buzz, and hold on one second. I got a fucking ad block and notification for fuck's sake. Um, hold on one second. I think was we a myth one. Yeah, myth is the other one. Uh, myth, X Choco Buzz, It's Hafu, Flight, and Tifu. Um, and basically they all have themed meals after themselves. So between December 8th and 12th, you can order a signature Wendy's meal from five of the biggest Twitch streamers, uh, on the Wendy's Never Stop Gaming menu available exclusively on Uber Eats. So you'll get a Uber Eats prize pass in the bag for a chance to win quote unquote epic giveaways because we're still using the word epic in 2020. Um, and then you can win gift cards and fucking hoodies and cool shit. Um, so first of all, before I get into the meat of this topic, see, we did that. Very nice. Very nice. So we're going to, we're going to take a run through real quick. I just want to describe to you the meals that we've got. And I feel like we need to kind of like, cause there's a couple of these that are just fucking trash. Like these people have just never gone to Wendy's before in their life. Um, as somebody who's been to Wendy's 6,000 times, probably 5,500 times with like my eyes halfway closed, um, you know, I can, I can, I know if I know my order like the back of my hand, but my topic is if you, um, since we're the number one gaming podcast in the world, and I'm sure this is coming real soon, if they did a second round of this program and when they hit us up to say, Hey, Dr. Bob, Chris P, Papa Dom, what do you want for your signature Wendy's? menu item what is it going to be um so, but before we do that just to give you some inspiration here's what the meal breakdown is <laughs> steve <laughs> steve a big bacon classic two mob lights and a middle light sounds incredible dude <laughs> this sounds unbelievable I don't even smoke cigs, and that sounds unbelievable. All right, so the Tifu <laughs> meal is ten a ten piece crispy chicken nugget, small fries, and a minute made light lemonade. Okay. 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 All right. The flight okay. meal. I don't know who flight. Are you guys familiar with flight? I don't know who he is. I think he's a, like a uh, like a basketball streamer, I believe. Huh. Okay. Or like a two K. Uh, the flight meal is a ten piece spicy chicken nugget, small fry, and high C fruit punch. Clearly, nobody's hungry here. We're going for the small fries and the chicken nuggets. I mean, what are we, fucking 10? Um, Wait a second. Food. Hold on. Wait a second. This is being targeted to 10-year-olds. There you go. Ah, true. Okay. Okay. I'm surprised go. I didn't put apple slices in any of these. Uh, Makes sense, it's, it's Hafu's meal is a Baconator. This, now we're talking. A Baconator, a small fry, and a Sprite. Okay. Uh, X Choco Buzz is a Big Bacon Classic. Big fan of the Big Bacon Classic. A small fry and a Diet Coke. Nobody's getting the bigger than a medium fry. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? And Myths is a classic chicken sandwich, small fry, and a Coke, which is actually... It sounds delicious, but it also is the most bare, the most boring meal on here. They should have taken this away from him. A classic chicken sandwich, a small fry, and a Coke? What did they just... They were probably like, all right, what meal do you want? And he was like, I don't know. 
So. No, he was probably like he was probably like no one picked a chicken sandwich yet. Here, you have to have this one because everyone else is like either nuggets or burgers. True, true. All right. So personally, I think the well, even though I'm a big spicy nugget guy, I just feel like ordering ten piece nuggets on your own is just just as a meal is just not enough for me anyway. So no, both of those, no chance. Both of those are on the chopping block right there. I think I got to go with it uh, either it's hafu or, or choco bars. Who get the big bacon classic and the baconator. Baconator, small fry, and a sprite. I mean, that sounds that sounds beautiful and refreshing. I don't know what you if you guys have any any things that stand out here is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. But wait, are we not making our own? Are you just we picking are. someone? I just wanted to, make... I just wanted to read those off so that you know. Oh yeah, you need at least two to three of those combined to make an average yeah. meal for myself. Like that's not yes. going to do anything. For me. Well, I mean, not for nothing. You get nuggets from a fast food restaurant, so you have something to eat on the way home before you have the actual meal. That's not the meal. Like when I, when I go to Wendy's, I get my meal and then I get nuggets for the ride home because I, I'm not going to sit there with the fries letting off an incredible aroma into the whip and I have nothing oh, to eat because I get into my driveway. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm behind the wheel with ranch. It's ranch is dumping on my fucking steering wheel as I drive over potholes. But you have to. But like like if I had to pick one of these, I, I have to go with uh, Hafu's. Where it's a bacon, ate a small fry, and a sprite. No ketchup because ketchup is for psychopaths. I will not have any ketchup near my stuff. Um, I am allergic. If anyone asks, so do not bring it near me because I will probably throw up. I'm not allergic, but I just really hate. It. But I have to go with uh, this. Isn't what I would pick. This is, wouldn't be what right, my so meal. Give me, the, is. give me the crispy meal. What's the what's oh the, the crispy meal? Oh, we're talking about from from Wendy's. We're gonna go with the. I can't go triple baconated just because. I mean, I'll be I'll be killing I'm puking, people. I'm puking in the back of the Uber on the way there. So yeah, all right. So you gotta go double baconated, but I'm gonna throw a curveball in the whole thing because it's your meal. You have to make it yours. I'm gonna go the double baconated, no condiment besides barbecue sauce, and then there's gonna be a meal with a medium fry, and then for the drink, I am doing the Minute Maid light lemonade. Ooh, okay. I would throw in nuggets, but I, I, there'll be backlash because, like, uh, notable streamer with funny accent and going dumber by the day tries to kill people with his signature meal by that's, it being 6,000 calories. That's true. I genuinely think your IQ is growing slowly day by day. I yeah, but, like, even if it's so low and working its way up, it's still low. still it's low. It's getting better, but it's... But they, one of these days, you're going to hit that fucking boom. Like you just open a dictionary one day and you get exponential I, IQ growth. Is and that then you're going to read a dictionary? You'll probably plateau for a couple more years. But you'll well, get no, like, I, I know words. I just don't know how to spell them. Yeah. You also don't necessarily know what they mean. True. Um, but they sound good. All right. What's a True. Dr. Bob meal? Oh, I'll, I'll put someone in a coma because <laughs> if I, dude, if I'm ordering Wendy's at two o'clock on a Saturday, like 2 2 a.m. Saturday going into Sunday, it's because I put down nine Miller lights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I put down some I put down some fucking beer. I need something to just soak while I crawl into bed. And it's gonna be a triple baconator. Easy. Easy triple baconator. You're gonna have the pretzel bun, right? Pretzel bun. Pretzel huh? bun. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretzel Bonjour, bun. my dude. <laughs> right. From Naples, fucking Florida. Bonjour. Uh triple baconator pretzel bun we're gonna get a we're gonna call it we're gonna call it a 10 piece nugget we're gonna put three on the top layer of the baconator okay we're gonna close that back up right we're gonna we're gonna put that back on top so we have seven seven uh nuggets on the side we're gonna get a large fry and we're gonna get a large sprite okay Thank and then we're, then we're gonna get a medium vanilla frosty I would be glued to the porcelain for two days after that. Yeah. Why do you think I have such horrible shits? I mean that that's that's a meal right there. Not like <laughs> Maddie's it's, like it's not the toilet two bites into that. <laughs> <laughs> I, imagine like the honestly the nuggets on top of the burger. That's that's a great move. I, I don't hate that at all. I think that's not, a very good move. Not a just, single person in this in this category separated themselves from anyone else. Okay. You need to be unique if this was mcdonald's i'd have a mcgangbang it would be the dr bob mcgangbang yeah 
I, like with this list, I don't think any of them got to pick it. That's the thing. I think Wendy's approach, I'm like, hey, we're going to name this male after you. You cool with that? Okay, great. It's the same reason why we have like fucking like the Travis Scott male at McDonald's and like the, what's the other one? Jay Balvin yeah, male but his, from McDonald's. But theirs are like a little different though. Like Travis Scott. Yeah, they have McFlurries like, and shit in them. Yeah. Or even like uh, Travis Scott's was like a, a quarter pounder, but it had like barbecue sauce on it and like nothing else. Or something like it was at least like edited a little bit. It wasn't just like the default like burger, fry, and whatever. So no, I feel you, though. dude. I, you know what I would do actually? I would make a dessert poutine from Wendy's as like my signature meal. It's gonna be fries with a vanilla frosty dumped on top of it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the toppings can be, but something to really put the world on its head right there. You've never dipped your fries in a frosty. You can't look me I'm straight not, in the eyes no, and I'm say not, you've never no, done that. I was laughing at Steve's com- comment. Stop! That's not poutine. You can't just dump whatever you want on fries. Uh, I mean, yes, you, yes, you can. And, uh, vanilla frosty on top, chocolate. You know, you can have that. Pick if you really want to. Chocolate, uh, chocolate frosty with French fries in it. It's incredible because it's the same reason why they put like salt in chocolate. You know, the salty, sweet, all that. It just gives it a better flavor. So that's really good. For the toppings, that's where I'm running into some issues. I mean, maybe you can go with like some blue cheese crumble, like M and M's, something on top. You know, it could be like a trail mix type uh, type ordeal. So I think I'm onto something. I, I mean, sure, sure. Um, so for me, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Steve, Steve goes throw some sweet potato and marshmallows on there while you're at it. Yeah, might as well dessert. Uh, all right, so for me, so we're gonna. I, I like to kind of go a little, go across the board because I like to pick, especially if I've had a, if I've had a little bit of booze. I'm basically, uh, if I'm ordering this off Uber Eats or if I'm or if I'm getting it home like on the way, uh, usually it's like my wife driving and me like in the passenger seat with my eyes closed. Um, so then I just get home and basically just dump it out on my dinner uh, on my dinner table and just sit there like hunched over the table eating. So. Regardless, I like to go a little bit across the board. I like to pick and, you know, kind of just go around the horn a little bit. So I usually go with the Son of Baconator meal, which is like, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, we go to get the medium fry, a Diet Coke, 10-piece um, spicy nuggets with ranch. Uh, usually because she, she has a couple of them. So uh, you want to make sure that if somebody's going to be there to fucking vulture off your shit that you have more than you need. Uh, and then this is what I'm, this is, this is the big fucking stipulation that I'm putting in here because... Wendy's doesn't do these anymore. Uh, I have had one Wendy's in the last like two or three years actually agree to do this for me because I used to get them every single time I went. But I want a Frosty Float because they don't do those Ooh. anymore. The Frosty Floats are no longer on the menu. But every so often, I'll, I'll just try to I'll try to float it by somebody and just be like, No pun intended. How about a How about a Frosty Float, buddy? You got any of those back there? You want to just splash a little root beer and then hit hit me under the soft serve machine real quick? Uh, you know, my uh, my buddy uh, George Washington says yeah. that you could throw a little splash of Coke on that right there. Perhaps uh, his his twin brother, George Washington, might be able to uh, grease the palms a little bit. Make sure that uh, – maybe maybe turn that red light on the ice cream uh, machine off. Uh, so I've had it happen once. I have had it happen once. Technically, it's not on the menu, so usually they just deny you outright. But if we're doing a special promotion and if it's going to be my meal, then they're going to need to buck up and give me what I want. So uh, root beer, frosty float. And if you can't, if this is absolutely out of the question, if the Wendy's Corporation is not willing to cooperate, uh, then I guess you could just get a uh, vanilla frosty to dip your fries in because that is very important. And now, all of a sudden, I'm going to get this tomorrow night. So uh, Sounds incredible. Have you ever been like embarrassed to like and like hide your bag yes. of food when you're like walking into your house because not like, once. D- not no, I'm, so I, I live in a condo building and sometimes if i go to mcdonald's or something and i ball the fuck out I, i'm talking like multiple big macs multiple fries like multiple meals sometimes i like like shield it i won't even show jimmy my roommate i'll just like kind of just like shield it and like walk to my room and just munch down on it Jesus dispose Christ. of yeah, the evidence people, in the dumpster the people in the hallway in your condo are like that's the kid with the margarita mix <laughs> <laughs> they, they talk about me. I mean, uh, walking, a, talk about. a walking legend, there's if you lot, will. There's a lot to discuss. Uh, but great. Yeah, that's that's me. And I'm going to get that. I mean, if not tomorrow night, I'm going to get it on uh, Friday. Uh, so like something cool, like other than just like the, like what we would order, I think them sparking these deals with streamers is actually a really good idea. Because how many times have you watched someone streaming 
And like, all right, yeah, I'm just like, I'm ordering food right now. When you know it's either like DoorDash or Uber Eats or something like that. Because they're, they're at their chair 10 hours a day working while like streaming their job. So like a lot of people watching them, that's like the norm to them. Like if they want to be a streamer, they're sitting down for all these hours. So like these brands catching wind of like the amount of people using these apps. Fuck, I, I use the apps daily and I don't even like, um, I don't stream. Um, but I think that's a really smart on their end to be able to spot deals like this. I just think, I think the most interesting part is the fact that like they're integrating more, like you, there's opportunities to win shit. So it's like yeah. before, before live streaming in the internet was such a huge thing for everybody. It like the old fucking, uh, McDonald's monopoly shit where people would go and try to get the complete the fucking board and whatnot. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, like they would always do weird giveaways and shit like that. Like one every quarter or something of, uh, by this, you get this chance to win something from us, you know, what a fucking a sham new monopoly was. Now that I think of it, that was a fucking sham. You have to buy something every time you want some people were going to McDonald's five times a day, trying to get boardwalk so they could have a chance to win a fucking Hyundai Elantra. We, I know somebody who won like fucking $10,000 off of that. I can't really? remember who it was. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I can't I'm remember my words. I'll eat my words then. I didn't know it was an you actual thing. The, uh, you should watch the HBO documentary uh, that was like for six or seven years or something like that. It was actually rigged and there was a dude who had it like all figured out and like literally was winning all the prizes that there was. And like he had he had it down to a science like it might have even been for like up to 10 years. It was completely impossible for you to win because there was one guy who had like a fucking no pun intended, a monopoly on the game who had figured out how to rig the system. How, how do you incredible. rig the system? It's amazing. You got to watch it. It's on HBO. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's called McMillions. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's incredible. It's incredible. And it's like the FBI gets involved. Oh my God. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Oh, he beat the fucking game. You can't, why, why the fuck would you need the FBI involved? McMillions. Regardless, I think it's, um, I think it's a really interesting way for these giant companies to like integrate themselves into live streaming culture while also giving people the opportunity to walk away with something other than a shitty fucking four dollar meal from Wendy's. You know, there's potential right. to win stuff. Do we know what that fucking potential is gonna is it gonna be like CSGO case fucking lottery percentages where it's under one percent chance to win like a fucking Xbox? series x or yeah. something like that like who knows but or like the oh, Taco Bell xbox competition that nobody's ever won maybe maybe since we have all these fucking companies going after loot box companies like all the governments going after loot box companies saying like hey you need to release the exact percentages of what you're going to drop and when it's going to be dropped maybe they have to now go after fucking wendy's i mean it's only right Ooh, it's only it's right. right it's only fair gamble it's a it's gambling for kids one thing I want to sprinkle yeah. in on this whole fast food talk: the Baconator is a real fucking burger, man. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't care what you say. Like, I know, like sometimes you'll get like a whatever the like McDouble, for instance, right? I'm like, yeah, it's it's good at the time, but that's not a burger. It's like a piece of paper that tastes like charcoal. It's not good, but it is at the time. The but when you have like a Baconator, it has like the juice coming out of it. The shit's real, man. It's a real fucking burger. Shout out Wendy's, man. Shout out Wendy's. Uh. I haven't had a big bacon classic in a while, and they put it back on the menu like a couple months ago, or like maybe a year ago. That used to be my favorite menu item, and now it's back. I think I gotta get, I gotta get one. Of, I gotta get me one of those Friday night. You're gonna see me in our little Discord Christmas party in this exact sweater, doused in Miller Lite, fucking shoving a big bacon classic into my face. Well, cool. um, if you guys want any of our wendy's mails go tweet at wendy's and tell them they need to fucking work with us next do it so we can so we can get you actual fucking meals from wendy's instead of these fucking half meals or whatever the fuck snacks that you're getting snack but, doms and i is gonna be 10 bucks bobs will be 40 dollars. so you can kind of <laughs> pick which side you want to be on 22.87 nothing crazy <laughs> you know the price you know, know. Oh. i'm always hammered when i fucking order it so i don't it's not like i'm looking at the fucking price at that point it's True. just uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm just clicking away. Um, but speaking of big streamers signing to uh, fast food chains, Chris, oh. you want to, Chris, you want to talk about big streamers signing to orgs? 
Yeah, so this past week, there's been uh, two stories more more notable than others. I'm sure there were smaller ones going on, but big ones that kind of jumped out with a lot of people that covered the news and all that good shit was Tim the Tapman and Dr. Disrespect. So I believe it was a couple of weeks ago, Tim the Tapman was on stream and he was just kind of like letting out the bait a little bit. He was like, oh, like maybe, maybe I do join an org. Like, oh, I'm like, I've been thinking about it, yada, yada. So obviously the internet took it and ran with it. So I even put out a little tweet saying, if I was to sign to an org, which org should I go to? And it just came out a couple of days ago or last week, whatever. And he said that he has gotten multiple offers in his DMs from multiple orgs. And he's talking with his agency and sitting down and going over everything and see if it makes sense, slash which one makes the most sense for him. Secondly, uh, the other day, Dr. Disrespect was streaming Call of Duty with Team Summertime. And uh, Hector Rodriguez Hex jumped on the call and they went back and forth, like bickering, just like friendly banter. And he was like, oh, yeah, you've been trying to get me on Optic for yada, yada, um, whatever. And two days ago, Doc was talking on stream again, and he had a fake phone call on his flip phone from Hector. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I see the billboard behind me. Oh, what do I think about an Optic Gaming logo being there? Oh, Hector, you've been trying to get me an Optic for 15 years. Yep, that's my number. Yep, yep, bye. And hung up. So obviously a lot of people are talking about it now, and maybe it's just me having conversations in my head about the whole thing, but I'm trying to figure out the pros and cons of someone of their size signing to an organization. On one side of the coin, they don't need it. They have enough money. They make. They have their own business. They don't need to do that. But on the flip side, I can see where it can help by having like guaranteed money. Granted, I don't know how these uh, contracts work, but in my eyes, I see like someone like Tim or someone like Doc. Well, yeah, both of them have families signing to an organization for a base pay of whatever X million dollars. They take a portion of what they're making, if not the whole thing. And then they have a cut of like their donations and stuff like that. So I just wanted to open up to you guys and see if it, do you guys think it makes sense for someone of their size to sign to an organization? Dom, what do you think? Uh, I would, I mean, my knee jerk reaction is no, because they don't need that organization to like make them who they are. I think the, I don't think they really are. I don't think they really like add to anything. I mean, the org might might want them, but not need them. And I think like if you're Tim or if you're Doc, especially like you have some of the you have one of the strongest um, personal brands out there, and you're a one man show. You have full creative control. You have full um, you know full free reign on on what you want to do. And I don't understand why if I was Tim or if I was Doc, like why would I want to go to an org where they could tell me what to do or they could change the terms of an agreement. They could put up whatever red tape they wanted to to prevent me from doing something. You know, uh, other people's opinions, other people's egos, other people's, um, you know, work ethics get in the way. And I just don't think that there's anything that Optic, it, like let's use Optic for for the example, for the sake of the, the story. Like there's nothing that they can uh, that they can really offer Tim or Doc aside from money that would really you know, be the incentive. Like, sure, they could probably offer them a steady income. And we were talking about, we've talked about this a while back with Shroud, with Ninja, with, um, uh, you know, the others that signed, like, exclusive streaming deals. This is just a steady thing. You know, like, they, I think this is more of, like, a job security thing, if anything, where, like, hey, you know, Tim has really been blowing up this year. Maybe there's another big streamer who's on the come up that is going to soon be, like, a big, like, let's say, like, Corpse Husband, continues to grow the way he's growing and and all of a sudden is like you know it's like the andy and toy story i don't want to play with you anymore thing and tim falls off and I, again i don't wish that on anybody especially tim who i really enjoy watching his content um like you know i think it's a job security thing where it's like okay optic wants to sign me to a five-year deal i know exactly what i'm going to be making for the next five years and mm -hmm. not a dime less and probably more if there's bonuses so i think that's probably the only thing i think you have to kind of like uh, you have to take like a calculated risk and say, you know, like, do I really want to be optic Tim? No, probably not. But do I want to make sure that my family's taken care of and, and on more of a consistent basis? Like maybe. So I would say that, you know, it would be a, a nice to have, not necessarily a, a, a need. Um, so I guess it just, it just matters, I guess, most on 
what these guys are prioritizing. Yeah. Oh, so my, this is another thing that pops in my mind too, is this is their full-time job. This is their income. This is their family's income. This is their kids like education and they're like providing for the family and kid, yada, yada. But you, at the end of the day, you have to think about your exit plan. Summit said this on stream like two weeks ago. That made a lot of sense. He goes, I have a tough time believing that people will just one day stop streaming and that's it. He goes, you just built right. something. Why not do something with it? And Summit was even saying like, he was like, oh, I'll rent it out to like up and coming streamers. We'll split things 50-50 and I'll give them my platform. I'll launch them a little bit and I'll still make money. So what, the, what that means to me is, when you're thinking of your exit plan, there's a lot of different ways that this can work. Granted, these streamers, for instance, Doc and Tim, their contracts are going to be the most detailed things in the world. It's not straightforward at all anymore. That's a huge personal brand you're buying. But think of it this way. And once again, this is probably completely far-fetched, but like Doc has been talking about having stake in an esports team or starting an esports team. It's like the, the shock, you no know, speed. Um, so what's stopping him from going to Optic and uh, Hector's like, hey, I'm willing to give you stake within our teams, plus your plus the salary, not a, da da da. So with esports continuing to grow, Doc continues to make more money. Granted, it's a calculated risk; it's a big risk for them. But I think there's ways that they would be able to make it worth their while, where they're making the same amount of money they are now without really having to lift a finger. And that's your exit plan to my eyes, because you can spend more time with your family. You can go on different ventures and use that money to do other things right. while freeing up your time from that 10 hours behind your computer a day. I think there are more benefits um, kind of from the sidelines looking in. But at the same time, I don't think it's something that has to be done right this second, because I promise you in a couple of years, and with like 100 Thieves continuing to grow, we'll use them as an example. If Tim's like, hey, I want to hang my hat here and kind of like wind down. Fine. Here's the paperwork. Like the, it's not going anywhere now. It's kind of like yeah. striking while it's hot. Yeah. I don't know. Bob, what do you think? Um, I don't know. It doesn't. It This topic doesn't like make sense to me in the in the way that like these people have become such huge individual icons in the industry where it would be it, it to me it almost seems like they would dilute their viewer base when they sign to an org maddie d said something you know that i was think i was thinking the exact same thing if a if an organization is about to sign doc what kind of a risk would that be with his twitch you know suspension or expulsion whatever the fuck it is up in the air like i don't i don't know it doesn't make sense to me because they're these individual icons the only person i see that it makes that it like works with and i don't understand like the actual like cohesive nature between the streamer and the organization is nick marks and phase like i don't understand what he does for phase or what phase does for him because again he's just like tim he's just like doc he's this you know polarizing icon like with a singular nature of himself how does he contribute to to phase clan and how do they contribute to him like i if i knew more about that like symbiotic relationship between the two then it would make more sense to me how doc or tim would do something similar with another org i think it's like um, a, a like a strategic partnership instead of an acquisition yeah. if that makes sense you know what i mean but like you were saying bob like i see nick doing more for phase than phase doing for nick and maybe that's naive because i haven't done my research on that but like just attaching your uh organization's name to a big time streamer obviously it draws more eyes there and they're pulling in their own viewers they're pulling in their own uh views on youtube and their social media followers so I, I maybe acquisition isn't the way for these bigger streamers. Maybe it's the partnership aspect, the strategic partnership where you have to literally lay out like, this is what I'm going to do for you. And then it's ultimately, is that worth my time? Do I need that? Is the money worth it? Like, right. And I, and I would like to know more about, like, we'll never get this type of fucking information from Nick Merckx or Tyler one and T one. Like who the fuck knows what's actually involved in those contracts where it's, Oh, you got to make like one guest appearance every quarter on this event that we host or something like that. Or you have to chip into, you know, six videos a year that we do for T1 sponsorships and whatnot. Like I, we don't know, but 
like everyone was saying beforehand, it's a, it's a guaranteed check. It's a base income that, you know, it's secure. It's secure income no matter what. Do I think they, do I think they need it? Absolutely not. Do I? Oh, sorry. No, No, I was going to say, can you compare it to like streamers signing exclusive deals with streaming platforms? No, no, because all of these platforms are integrated throughout every other streaming platform. If it was like, if like Facebook gaming bought like, I don't know, fucking luminosity or something like that, then yeah, I guess where all fucking luminosity like contracted streamers would have to be under Facebook gaming. Yeah, sure. But it's not, it's distributed throughout whatever fucking platform that they want. Yeah. So I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. I get, well, it makes sense to the extent that it's secured income. It doesn't make sense to me in the way that these people are individual icons that don't, that never needed organizations to build them up to where they are now. Why would they, why would they want it now? doesn't make sense that's what doesn't make sense to me yeah it makes it makes sense for like the mid-tier in my eyes where like you're right there but you just can't really break through that's when it makes sense to me but if you're already established (laughs) the the only thing that talks is the money well you see it now you've seen it with um with g2 a lot recently dean so cool got signed to g2 um he'll mike he'll mike got signed to g2 and you know, I could be telling people in chat right now might not know who Dean so cool or he and Mike are, but we like you and I do. I don't even think Dom does Dom. You probably don't. Yeah. They're relatively mid tier streamers. Mm-hmm. You know, they get a couple thousand viewers every time they go live, but they're not pulling fucking doc, Tim, right. uh, Nick Merck's numbers. You know what I'm saying? They get signed to those orgs. They get all of these fucking awesome opportunities to go forward. It makes a lot of sense for them to do that. It doesn't make as much sense for everybody else. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another thing. All right. So that's actually perfect because thinking of those like big numbers, right? One of the biggest streamers on Twitch, XQC, he got signed to Luminosity. Yeah. Again, that I don't fucking understand. I don't, it does. It makes no sense to me how or why. Tyler one goes to T1. I mean, we'll never know. That's the thing. We'll never know what those contracts entail outside of like, one day maybe their contract ends and they're like yeah i was you know i didn't really want to talk about this i signed an nda couldn't talk about this at the time but i was getting paid a whole lot of money and i only had to do a very minimal amount of work to sign in so i don't fucking know yeah it turns into the david beckham situation with guild esports where he has to do like a show his face a couple times a year for 20 million guaranteed a year to be the face of the brand way i think it's i think it's way different than that but that's that's well if you're just showing face a couple times a year for money just to like show that you're a part of it it's uh i don't know yeah but he's not fucking gaming for it's not like he's fucking streaming for them he's just showing up um i wanted to talk about cyberpunk launch issues but we don't know the full extent of them yet so i think we can save that for like next week they're coming up there's yeah still as we speak dude there's so many and I think we'll have a better collective list next week because the game's launching now. Yeah. And there's so much wrong with it, apparently. But um, I wanted to touch on one very quick topic. And then if we had time to do a little Zelda on Bob's Guess My Game. One very quick topic. We don't. Well, let's please not drag this out because there's one correct answer and we don't need to argue this. And there has been. a. We were just talking about Doc. There's been this ongoing conversation between him and Nick Merckx about what would win in a fight, a grizzly bear or a silverback gorilla. And we all know the correct answer is, and we could say it at the same time, three on one. Okay. All on go three, two, one, go silverback the gorilla. grizzly bear. Okay. So Dom's wrong. And here's why. No, I'm not. So, okay. Again, so Dom's wrong. And here's why. I've gotten into maybe two two Twitter arguments in the past couple of days about this topic. Silverback gorillas have opposable thumbs, okay? They have the ability to grip with those thumbs and then literally tear each other limb from limb, okay? Gorillas do that. They just grab on and then they rip because they have thumbs. People are overlooking 
evolution to say that a grizzly bear can beat a silverback gorilla in a fight, and it's fucking insane. Gorillas, I think a grizzly is more are like not shifty. Fucking, gorillas are not fucking designed to kill. They they hang out and eat leaves all day. Also, no, they're no, 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 no. Those are gorillas at zoos. Those are gorillas at zoos, Dom. That's different. Reg- regardless, silverback gorillas are so much smaller than grizzly bears. Grizz- a grizzly bear is going to fucking rip that thing limb from limb. They're, they are way bigger than you think they are. I promise. Wait, silverback gorillas only weigh 350 yes, pounds? They're the size of fucking Vince Wilfork. So Vince Wilfork goes up against a fucking uh, a, a grizzly bear, which is the size of a, of a Chrysler Windstar. And has claws and teeth. That thing is ripping the fucking guts out of that gorilla. That thing is okay, going to die. Yeah, Hold a on. male grizzly bear is double the weight of a male uh, gorilla. So the Thank you. Gorilla. And how tall is it when it's on its hind legs? Can you look that up too while you're there? Doesn't matter, dude, because that fucking gorilla comes through and punches him in the fucking gut. They don't punch. This isn't a video game. This isn't fucking. This isn't Tekken, where, they, where there's a, a gorilla character. This this is a uh, a predator that is that is designed to kill versus a gorilla that is sitting on its ass and eating. Bro, leaves. these gorillas are pussies, dude. I think I would dude, fuck no them up, dude. Uh, how how Chris. tall is the silverback gorilla? Five foot one. Chris. Five foot oh, one. A grizzly bear is eight feet. Oh. Yo, five foot one, dude. I shit five foot one. Chris, stop. Okay, you, you're again. You're overlooking evolution at this point. Gorillas are more intelligent and more mobile. Okay, mobile. Way yeah, more fucking I agree mobile. With that. Yeah, I agree with that. And more uh, intelligent. A bear is crushing that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You could put Sir Isaac Newton uh, up against a fucking grizzly bear, and his intelligence and you isn't going to save him. And you <laughs> give him inventions and tools like a gun. Evolution, Dom. Evolution. I mean, a gorilla's not going to form a fucking bow and arrow out in the woods when he's going toe to toe with a grizzly bear. Yeah. Pointed sticks. We're talking about Planet of the Apes right now. Pointed right. sticks. We're, we're talking that about grizzly you, take, bear. you take any old bear, and and you could take the only the only fucking land predator that's beating a grizzly bear is a bigger bear or maybe like a tiger, like. Tigers are tiger. also huge. No, I don't know about a tiger. No They're, fucking way. All right, so if it's on obvious now, I've changed my opinion. It is a now a grizzly bear. bear. The answer is grizzly bear. Who was? I, I don't know. Fucking gorillas were five feet tall. Yeah, they're not as big as you think they are. If my little cousin's up, five feet tall. <laughs> no, you want? I mean, five foot one, three hundred pounds. I mean, that's a fucking unit. Yeah, yeah but it's like just, a baby I, yeah. There's unit. a guy at the liquor store down the street who's five one and three hundred pounds. <laughs> I don't see him beating up a fucking grizzly bear either. <laughs> he has thumbs. <laughs> yeah, There's, he's got thumbs. No, no, no. This was the argument I got into with the guy. Some go. guy on Twitter. Some guy on Twitter was like, "I have opposable thumbs. You don't see me ripping apart a grizzly bear." Yeah, and I no. Said, I you said, know who else had? You know who else no had opposable offense? thumbs? Was fucking Leonardo DiCaprio in uh, in that movie where he gets literally fucking mauled by a grizzly bear? Yeah, you know who else had opposable thumbs? Ted Bundy. Okay, and Ted Bundy <laughs> would take out that grizzly bear. Easy. Probably would. Probably would. Grizzly bear. So it was three zero. So, easy. So Nick Marks was saying grizzly. Doc was saying gorilla. I gotta side with Doc on this one. I think the gorilla still takes it easy. But I think it, I think I think there's more that has to be talked about with it. Um, I'm not dragging this out. I'm just saying like it depends on that scene. Like if they're out in the woods with access to everything, then yeah, go for it. But if they're like in a ring, it's a it's different in my opinion because those thumbs. Like you can like go for the eyeballs and stuff. I don't think a gorilla knows like go for the eyeballs. I feel like the gorilla is just gonna like square up, and the bear is just gonna be like, okay, I eat those and just bite them in the neck. All I'm gonna say is that a fucking grizzly bear literally has like the claws on this on these things are trained to rip apart another animal. Gorilla's <laughs> hands, those thumbs, are meant to reach up and get leaves. A nice handful of leaves and sit there and and eat and eat them. That's that's basically it. A, a grizzly bear is those hands are not designed to eat leaves. They are designed to murder. That is what they are designed to do. Dude, I mean so gorillas silverback gorillas are just scarier looking panda bears. Dude, no. No, no, no panda bears are no, no. gorilla. No, panda bears are pretty fucking aggressive. Yeah, panda bears are gorilla. They're so cute, though. They're so cute. All I'm saying is, you there's never been a planet of the grizzly bear, but there has been a planet of the apes. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. Also, it and doesn't matter if they have fucking thumbs, Bob. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. Matters. No, it matters. No, matters. Bob, fuck, dude, it would matter. Stop, 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 stop. Just, just stop for a second. 
if a grizzly bear is just, you know, oh, charging down at a fucking gorilla and the gorilla jumps into a tree and swings past it. Mobility, bro. It's all about mobility. Tom, you played Dex characters before in D&D. It's mobility and brains. Mobility Bob, and brains. The only thing that a grizzly bear is losing to a gorilla in is like a door opening contest. They're not having a fucking <laughs> they're not going to see who can nope. who can no play way. video games. Yeah, that if they're playing Mario Kart and they hand them both a controller, <laughs> Maybe the gorilla wins. I don't even know. No I still don't even know. Yeah, they're yeah. not having, uh, you know, uh, who can who can press the most buttons contest or who can open a doorknob contest. They're having a death match, and a grizzly bear is beating the ever living shit nope. out of a gorilla. That's just. I think. I think. Nick that's Marks, come fucking, on the podcast, and we can discuss this further. I think that I think that gorilla is fucking. That grizzly bear is going to charge at him. He fucking jumps onto a, a branch, swings past it, throws that fucking grizzly in a rear naked fucking choke. Ooh, so, fucking, so now the silverback girl is a fucking UFC yeah. fighter. Yeah. Now he's, yeah, now he's yeah. George St. Pierre. He knows how to do a full yeah. Nelson yeah. Uh, out of nowhere. He's yeah, going to put him in a fucking so. arm bar. No chance, Bob. You know how think, many people yeah, I know that go. are 300 pounds and have thumbs and a 5'1 and can't do that? All the people that oh. I know. All oh. <laughs> I think I, I could beat the fuck out of like a bear cub though. I think I beat the fuck out of one of them. You got about fifteen seconds to beat the fuck out of it until the mama bear comes around the corner and rips your skull out of your face. Imagine just like one clean shot to a baby. I just sprint away, just standing there looking and at it. And it's just a fucking silverback gorilla clapping in the background. I was so banged <laughs> up a couple months ago, like out in the sticks, like camping with a couple friends. I was all banged up, and I was like. They're like, yeah, there's bears that come around there. I go, nothing, nothing. I think I could, I think I could take one out. And I was I'm genuinely convinced that I was gonna be able to beat up a bear if it showed up. I mean, blame the booze, blame the drugs, but at that point, I, I could have. I think I could have. Yep. Um. Okay. Well, you're both wrong. Um. I fucking. You know, Chris, I thought I had you there for a little bit. I thought you were on my side. Then he found know. out that they're the same fucking size of a Walmart greeter. And you know, <laughs> I disagree. I, whatever, I disagree. I think Gorilla wins a hundred percent of the time. Um, you guys want to do a little Zoltan Bob's guess my game? Yes, sure. sir. All right. Zoltan is here to give you the wisdom. All right. So it's been a little bit. We haven't done Zoltan, Bo- Zoltan Bob's guess my game in a while. So I'll explain it to all of the listeners who don't know. I am Zoltan Bob. Up here in my head, I'm pointing to my head if you're not watching the VOD, I have a video game that Tom and Chris have 20 yes or no questions to try to figure out. Very simple. They just have to ask me a question, a yes or no question. I answer it yes or no. And after 20 questions, they have to figure out if they determine the game. So the floor is open to questions whenever. Was this game released after the year 2010? Actually, hold on. Give me one second. I didn't pull. Well, I already stoked him, man. <laughs> it's like I never <laughs> left. It's like I never left. I, I had something else pulled. I had the weights of a fucking grizzly bear. <laughs> What's it called? Pulled up. Um. All right. What was the question again? Was the year? Was the game released after the year two thousand and ten? Uh yes. Oh my god! Easy win already. Dom, take it home again. Uh, is this game? Uh, for. Both console and PC. Uh, y- yes. Is there multiplayer in this game? No. Ooh, okay, single player game after 2010, console and PC. Um, is this game? Do you primarily play as a human? Uh, no. Ooh. Okay. Kind of, but no. Oh, here we go. The gray area. All right. Um, so maybe like a that mutated. I don't know. So I'm, I'm thinking, just thinking out loud right now. Um, do you play as just one person the whole game? No. Ooh, multiple, uh, multiple points of view. Okay. Um, is platforming a primary mechanic in this game? No. Uh, I'm going to go back on the human thing and say yes. Is yes, primarily okay. plays a hum- human. All right. 
Um, is shooting a primary mechanic in this game? Uh, no, but it's in the game. Okay. Okay. Um, is this game third person? Yes. Excuse me. Um, so after 2010... It's been a while, man. I'm, I'm, out of, I'm out of season right now. Hmm. Are there zombies in this game? What a dumb fucking question, Chris, you moron. Um. Okay, great question, Chris. Great question. Oh! Go. oh hold on! No, but there's zombie-like creatures okay. in the game. Ooh. Okay. I mean, Dom, I'm just tossing you the alley oop right there. Take it home, King. Wow. Wow. Zombie like creature. You know what it is, but I want you to get the glory. Let's see. You here. deserve it. After 2010, there's zombie like creatures. I would not focus too heavily on that question, Dom. <laughs> Chris thinks it's a fucking uh, a door blowing open. I question. think it is. I mean, it's not. <laughs> I mean, no, that just shows the depth I know. I mean, I know that there's zombie creatures. I knew that the whole time. I know what the game is. Um, shooting is, and you, just to clarify, you said shooting is not a primary mechanic, but it is in the game. Correct. And platforming is not a, pri a primary mechanic. Correct. Again, there are, there is, there's a lot of stuff in this game. Platforming can be involved in the game, but it's yeah. not a primary mechanic. I have one more question, Dom, if you don't mind. I think I think this might be a help. Is this part of a franchise? Uh yeah. That's that was ten. Um so I don't know the name <clears throat> of this genre, but this is the genre that I'm thinking of. I guess you could call it like action adventure, like an Assassin's Creed or Uncharted or type thing where there's climbing, running, shooting, cover based stuff. Is it like that genre of game? Uh, say just say the genre. Let's say, knowing that that's how I define it, like an action adventure game. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I get, yeah, I, I can't like whatever genre like Uncharted and Assassin's Creed are, where like they all have the same like two button combat, like. Then, then no, probably not. Actually, no, probably not. No. Right. So what you're saying, it's, it's more of a survival horror game, is what you're saying. Are you asking that question? No, I'm just, I'm just looking at you when I say it. You're biting your lips on the ask the question now. Is this, is I, I, this, I, have very, I have very dry lips right now. I is mean, this a survival horror game? No. Fuck, man! You bluffed me. Um, All right, don't, ac don't. Action is involved in the genre, but it's not an action-adventure game. No. Hmm. I do need to put chapstick on though, but I'm I'll do it after I finish his beer. Same. Um so there's multiple POV characters. I'm just hiding behind my microphone right now. <laughs> you got this Dom. Come on now. Tap into that big brain. You know you got this. Is this game like uh <clears throat> so it's third person? Is it like a close to the shoulder type perspective? Uh, yeah. Hmm. So you said yes for the, the whole human aspect. Is that the one you went back on? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you play as multiple POVs. Do you play as both a male and a female? Yes. Good question, Dom. Mm, that's real good. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I fucking nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm trying to make this as uncomplicated as possible. I'll explain it. I'll explain it at the end of this. I know this what it game... is, dude. I genuinely uh, think you guys are capable of getting this. I think I know we're what capable it is. of it, too. I believe in us.
So you said uh, it's not a survival horror game? Correct. Okay. Uh, is this... Damn. I genuinely know the answer, so... All right, do you want to ask another question? Do you, yeah. want, to, do you want me to ear muffs and take my headset off? Yeah, good. So he said, he said it's easy for us to get because he talked about it last week. He's been playing through Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, but Bioshock is first person. Oh, oh. Put him back on, Bob. I heard all of that. Chris, you're an idiot. I know. I thought I, thought I was onto it. <laughs> yeah, it's also... I, yeah. I, I, too many questions. Like, I can't keep track, man. There's like... There's like I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, there's like eight of those that don't apply to Bioshock. Twelve? I'm at fourteen. I only have twelve. I got close to the shoulder. I missed whatever Chris's last question was. You play as both a male and a female. All right, we'll count as thirteen then. All right, I could be wrong as well. I might have missed one. Um, I want you guys to get this one though. Granted, I want you guys to get these every time, but you fucking yell at me like I don't. You're very nice, Bob. That's so nice of you, bro. I'm not against you in this, okay? Um, that's just your that's just your way to kind of cop out of us being like, you stink, we beat you, yada yada. So it's I, smart what you're I, doing. I could make this game so fucking hard, it'll be a game I know for a fact you've never heard of, Chris, <laughs> and Tom might have heard of. I can make the game hard, but I don't. You know, dumb. All right, Zoltan Bob's guess my game. Next time I'm fucking host, y'all not gonna know. You'll never hear of this game before, Chris. It's that simple. I mean, I haven't heard a majority of them anyway. You've wish you fucking brought this upon yourself. All right, just oh, so yeah. chat knows what we're where we're at. We've got the game was released after 2010. It's for console and PC. There is no multiplayer. You play as a human. Uh, there are multiple POV characters. It is not a platforming game, though there are some platforming elements in it. It is not a shooting game, uh, although there are shooting mechanics in it. Uh, it's third person. There are zombie-like creatures in the game. Uh, it is part of a franchise. It is not survival horror, however. <clears throat> it is close to the shoulder perspective, and you play as both a male and female uh, in the game. <sighs> My camera got frozen. Weird. Yeah, no, you're stuck like holding up four fingers. Was the fuck? Am I still frozen? No, you're good. You're back. You're good. No, uh, I'm, stream, I'm frozen. No, now I'm not. What the fuck? Whatever. Um. Hmm. Was this game developed by Bioware? No. All right, I'm going to stop asking questions. That? I'm sorry, Dom. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What the fuck did you just burn a question for then? I'm not going to lie. I went, I, went, I, went, I went off of Steve's uh, Bioshock. But I, I don't have chat up anymore. So. Bioshock is not... Wait, Bioshock's not made by Bioware? No. It's 2K. It's made by 2K. Yeah, what? Oh, fuck. It... Shit. All right, well, I just burnt the question. Ask the 2K question. No. Well, it's not Bioshock. What I'm doing. Uh, yeah, hold on. Dom literally explained Bioshock is a first person game. You know what, Dom? On your behalf, I'm going to give you that question back because Chris some fucking idiot. I did, that for a re I did that for a reason, Dom. I knew oh. what I was doing. Free question. All right. Uh... It's not a free question. You knew the answer to it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Man, shit. Um, let me go back to the well on questions that I've asked before. Um, are there uh, like RPG elements in this game? Yes, that's 14. Okay. Um, hmm. Is... Was this game ever an arcade game? That's an interesting question that Maddie asked. As in like an arcade cabinet game? Like, would you have ever been able to find this game or a variation of it in the arcade? No. 
God, I hope I, I swear to God, if someone Google searches this in like somewhere in fucking Indonesia or something, there is an arcade cabinet for it. I'm going to fucking snap, but I'm just going to say no. Hmm. Doesn't sound like you're too sure. That might be a free question right there. I don't know. It doesn't have to be, but no, the answer is um, fucking. Are there is there other stealth elements in this game? Yes. Okay. I'm just and let me double check that, but I'm I'm almost positive on yes. Wait, do you hear the crowd right now, Dom? Here they go. Dom. 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 <laughs> Dom. 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 There's Everyone's stealth. Good. There's fucking like all of this except for like the PC thing. Uh like the PC fact, and then like one other thing is it like it would be The Last of Us, but it's not because so technically there's no stealth mechanics in the game, but there is stealing in the game, or no, there is that's just a fucking mod, dude. No, there's no stealth in the game. Yeah, oh my god, I'm never doing a game like this ever again. There's There's a stealing mod in the game. Yeah, because people wanted stealth in this game so badly that they put a mod in. All right, so the game has mods. It's clearly popular on PC. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, it's Madden 2017. That's definitely it. <laughs> um, Rockin said give a hint um, would you guys do we're on question 17 right now would you guys do I give one hint for 17 for two two more questions which gives you 19 20 two more yes or no questions sure okay I'm gonna 17 18 uh, it's based off of a book Ooh. Ooh. Based off of a book. Again, Chris is out on this one. I'll uh, do that I whole reading thing. I think I know this one. Oh. Two more questions. Based off of no, it can't be Shadows of Mordor, Steve, because you play as a male and a female in the game, and I think both of the characters that you play as in Shadow of Mordor are male. <laughs> sea Dog goes, I don't do that whole reading thing, Chris. I love you. I love you too, Sea Dog. <sighs> oh my god. Based off a book. Come on, big book guy right there. I'm going to have to start doing, uh, implementing like a. Who wants to be a millionaire? A shot yeah. clock. Yeah. A shot clock might be fun. Um, it's based off of a book. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, I don't think this is it, though, because it's first person. Um, shit. Well, it's third person. Wait, hold on. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Um... Okay, so there are mods. It's on PC. You play as male and female. There's the human questionable thing. I, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's coming. I think it's coming. Hold on a second. It's based off of a book. Okay. Uh, is that? Oh, man, I really don't want to like fuck this question up. Okay. So does uh, is there a, a, a television adaptation of this game? Yes. Oh. I is, does the main character have white hair? Yes. Is this game? Last question. Is this game the The Witcher Three? Yes. See, easy money. This kid fucking blows, huh? You need that was a good, one. That was a good one, Bob. That was a good um, one. So for the human question, the reason why this yeah, question like is, he's technically they're born human, but then forced mute forced to mutate into witchers. So technically they were human, but yeah, are that no makes sense. that's the perfect way to phrase that, yeah. Um, when it comes to like zombies, there are creatures in that universe that are zombie-like, yeah, but are not 
All of that started oh. clicking when I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, okay, all of this, like the the like wishy washy questions, all make sense for these reasons. Yeah, and uh, <sighs> dude, it's so hard doing a fucking game like that because there's so much shit involved in it yeah. that it is there platforming. Technically, no, but there's yeah. hidden shit all over the fucking world that you have to platform to get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Is, like is it. there shooting? Technically, yes, but yeah, with a fucking crossbow problem. and stuff. I love Damn, it. Bro. That was Good a great job, one. Multifaceted. You did great, Dom. <laughs> well, honestly, Dom, we're a good team, man. We're Not really made by good Bioware. Team. Not made by contrary <laughs> to popular belief. I mean, it could be, though. We, we don't know. Made by CD Projekt Red, the uh, developers and publishers of Cyberpunk 2077, the game that it might work. That's actually I don't know. Box. It, it could work. <laughs> Um, great Chris job. is the yeah. Danny Green of this game. <laughs> you guys are so good. Um, do we have any voicemails? <laughs> uh, I think we do. I think we do. <laughs> Steve, as soon as we figured out it wasn't Bioware, we really turned it around. Honestly, I think that question really turned the game on its head. I, I, have, I really think it did. I think I'm going to start implementing. Um, a shock who wants to be, no, who wants to be a millionaire? Fucking uh, like phone a friend. Give a hint, Ooh. something like that, but it's at the cost of questions. Yeah, have to like be like that. one, two, and three uh, questions or something like that. We're really upgrade. Like we're really upgrading Zoltan Bubs. Guess yeah, my just game. tuning it up for the new year. All right, we uh we do have one voicemail. Um, uh, here we go. Six one seven seven zero one seven six seven eight. You know the name. You know the number. The WGG Internet Dad Sauce Line. Um, give us a call and we'll react to it live on the show. Um, just as always. So here we go. Hey, what's up, WGG fam and founding fathers? It's JB Genesis calling in for another weekly voicemail. Hoping everyone's having a wonderful week so far. Happy holiday season. Dom, keep up those blogs. Loving them. Um, my question for you guys this week is, do you have any fun um holiday events or like gift exchanges, something like that going on either with family or with coworkers, something like that. Um, I've got a secret Santa going on with coworkers, so that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, let me know, guys. Much love as always. Peace. Thank you, JB. And uh, fa-la-la, holly jolly, happy holiday to you. Um, so, like, I, I used to. I feel like I haven't done it in a while. Like, obviously, this year is going to be different with everything, but... I used to do a secret Santa with my like friends back home, well, childhood friends, whatever, but everyone's kind of like gone in their own direction. So there's not a big group like there used to be. Um, and then my family on one side of the family, they do a Yankee swap. So as I've gotten older, I've been getting implemented into it because a lot of it's like just drinking uh, equipment or like booze or weed or something. And like once I hit that age where I was able to kind of get involved, they brought me into it, but I'm the lazy one every year. I was just like, all right, like I, I'm not gonna buy anything. I don't feel like being in it this year because I'm a cheap prick and I didn't feel like buying anything. But when I do do those, they're really fun. I usually make out with like some cool glasses or like a bottle of scotch that I'll never drink. Uh, but yeah, that's that's me. Dom, okay, Bob, me. Dom, um, hello, hello. Yeah, Bob, you go. Hello. Oh, dude, my fucking dude, my Discord's so fucked right now. Um. Yeah, similar to Chris, uh, I would do with extended family, we would do like a Yankee swap and I would always walk away with like a $70 bottle of scotch or like a bottle of wine that I, neither of which I would ever drink. Uh, but that's kind of slowed down over the past couple of years. My cousins and I, Chris too, and Tuna, we every year except for this year, we always just get like one practical gift and then one fucking joke gift. And I think it was two or three years ago, Chris too got me a bunch of small gifts and then wrapped the whole thing in a fucking whole thing of saran wrap. So I had to go through an entire roll of saran wrap to get to each present. And I almost told him to just sit. I almost said, fuck it and gave it back to him. Um, but yeah, that's usually it. Like one practical gift and then one like joke gift, except for this year. Uh, both of my cousins want like actual practical stuff and they are chipping in with my girlfriend to get me an SM7B, a brand new microphone. 
So. Ooh. Uh, some people don't know what a Yankee swap is, by the way. I don't know if you want to explain oh. that really quick. Oh, God. It's so, f I feel like it's so hard to explain. It's like everybody shows up with a gift. Uh, you draw numbers for that gift. Yeah. And then you could trade it out for the next gift and then on to the next person. Or you could trade with somebody else. Yep. Basically, if you go first, I think, or is it first or last? Like, because I think last. No, yeah. If you go first, because um, you can't trade with anybody, so you just have that gift, so people can take it from you. Yada yada yada. The last person can take, you know, a gift. You you get to you get the option to keep the gift you have, or you can go to any previous participant um, to take their gift instead to swap with them. You like force a swap with them, and then the first person. Uh, the person who had number one at the very end can basically pick whatever gift they want. Um, Jess said in the chat that uh, the gift can only be traded twice. I haven't played with that rule before, but that's a very interesting one. Um, that definitely adds a little bit more strategy to it. Uh, for me, we do a uh, Secret Santa. This is our 13th year doing it. Um, uh, me and all my closest buddies from high school. Uh, friend of the program, friend in real life, Johnny Rupia is in there. Uh, one of our oldest traditions, one of my oldest traditions, period, uh, we do a Secret Santa. We're at, we planned on hosting it this year and doing like a big, basically we roll it all into one. We do like a big Christmas party. Uh, you know, we got like an ugly sweater party. You know, we, we do the the gift exchange. First, the first year we did it, uh, we were like, I think we were, I think we were still in high school when we, the first year we did it. Um, you know, it was kind of like an informal, you know, dinner and, and we gift swapped and stuff like that. And then as it evolved, now it's like this big elaborate, you know, holiday shindig. Um, you know, all of us have significant others now and, and, you know, some of us have kids. So like it's, it's grown into like this monster of an event. Um, so <clears throat> we were going to host it this year. Um, and unfortunately we can't do it the way we want to, but we're still going to do something in the mid afternoon. We're going to have a fire outside in the back of my house. Um, you know, everybody can hang out around the fire and, and exchange gifts kind of like middle of the day instead of doing something that night. Because obviously it's not safe to have everybody cooped up in the same house right now. So next year we'll get back to it. But we, we wanted to make sure that we could preserve the tradition regardless. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's, that's my big thing. And then in recent years with my siblings, uh, we've been doing like a, like a gift card grab or, or something like that. Just to keep it simple because all of us are too busy buying gifts for our, our nephews. And, you know, we want to make sure that we can... Uh, you know, put the focus on them and, and for us, like, get, you know, you get, like, a $50 Dunkin' Donuts gift card or something like that here and there, something that you can use. And Sea Dog, yeah, he said, good thing the fire is outside the house. Well, I could have had a fireplace, motherfucker. So, you know, uh, <laughs> thank you, smartass. Uh, fires can occur, uh, occur indoors. Um, and I did have a fireplace, but we just ripped it out. So um, didn't want to deal with it. So, um, yeah, that's me. And that's all we got what? for voicemails, just the one. Nice. Um, anything else before we land the train? Negative. Uh, I can go first. We've got a decent amount of stuff. Let me see. We have a yeah, do we do have a good a fucking amount of stuff? Let's see. Alice uh, commented, "A great clutch, bro. I've subbed to you. Make pro oh, we talked about that last week. Fuck that." Mm, new sub ryan b darius h commented wicked good gaming oh good that's a recomment that's fucking yeah that's weird. a response yeah those are response uh jb commented fuck kenny fuck pete that was in quotation mark <laughs> something that i said so don't take it out on jb take it out on me uh chris too commented sick ghost from chris at 131 <laughs> uh he also commented first again by the way commented my boy's heart hold on hold on i have to do it in his fucking voice chris who commented <coughs> my boy's heart that was good i'll enjoy that one uh jb commented on the oh there's a there's a new video up at uh, youtube.com backslash wicked gaming and that is a brand new easter egg that we found on uh die machine and uh, JB commented fake news. Not true. Uh, Alex P commented Grefga. No Grefga. Not Gref G. It was uh, um, on a video that I put up. Yep. Grefga. Uh, Killer Sentra commented it is aimbot. The reason they cannot get rid of it. Part of the physics of the game. 
VNR4 uh, commented thumbs down. Joshua T commented <laughs> yes. Uh, Richard H commented at 23 seconds. Myhotmom.online. Nice. I would just not going to that website, but thank you again for the engagement. And Tamara B commented, you got me good. So that's all um, I got. Sure did. But Got him. Uh, as for what I have, I do not have anything. Unfortunately, if you want to shout out, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes if you do enjoy the show. really helps us within the rankings. Uh, like I said, if you enjoy it, tap the five stars. You can leave us a comment below in the review. It could be a question, a roast, a compliment, whatever you want. As long as it doesn't get us TOS, I will read it live on the show. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, this week we do not have one, so I am not going to be reading one out loud. But please do that. Dom? Oh. Also, also, big shout out to Steve, Chris, and Kenny for helping out with that video. Thank you. Um, for me, um, big shout out to everybody who's already purchased a sweater. Um, go buy the WGG uh, 2020 ugly sweater. You can see it right here on my beautiful body. Um, give me the loot. Give me the loot right there. You see the the signature WGG gingerbread man. He's back. And he's in his little sleigh right there, and he's ready to deliver loot boxes to all the good boys and girls who stole their parents' credit cards this year. Um, so uh, thank you, Steve. said the design turned out great. Thank you very much. Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to cover right now, and they're all very important. And I'm going to actually be announcing a little contest because we haven't done a little contest in a while. And, you know, we're feeling we're feeling good. It's the season to give. And this charity, every single dime that we make from it um, is going to go to Toys for Tots so that every kid can find a little loot under their tree this year. Um, it's a fantastic cause. It's one that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, the past couple of years, my mother has uh, raised a lot of money and a lot of donations for Toys for Tots. Uh, she's unable to do that this year. So I wanted to um, pick up the mantle and, and have us raise some money because... Um, there's way too many kids out there who, you know, uh, have really sad holidays because, you know, they, they, they don't, uh, they get, they, they get overlooked, you know, or, or they're, um, you know, in a less fortunate area or, you know, they, their parents can't swing it or whatever it is. Um, so we want to help out and, um, you know, we all, we, we spend all year getting nice toys for ourselves and, and, you know, basically have, uh, our big gaming PCs are basically like just giant grown man, baby toys and, you know. I think some kids deserve that stuff too. So um, if you have the uh, if you have the uh, the time or the money, um, check out uh, wickedgoodgaming.com slash shop. It's right at the top of the page. It's the uh, Wicked Good Gaming 2020 Charity Ugly Sweater. Um, every dime of that will go straight to charity. I think the sweaters are like 40 bucks um, and half of that uh, is pure profit. So it'll end up being like 20 bucks per sweater goes um, to charity, which is, which is really good. And that charity is Toys for Tots. We're going to be making that donation on the Friday before Christmas so that they can use, uh, the funding this year. Uh, and I believe that is not this week, but next Friday. So if you're listening to this on a Friday, you have one week to buy one. WGG does not get any of the money. We don't get any of it. The rest of it goes to Threadless, uh, who is our platform. So Sea Dog asked that in the chat. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, okay, here's the contest, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we recently just had a nice big contest to give out very exclusive, very sexy, very sleek WGG esports jerseys. Um, we had our winners. Um, our winners have been awarded these jerseys. They're, they're printing and they're shipping out and hopefully they're going to arrive before Christmas. However, I know that there's lots of people who still want one of these jerseys. So... Uh, I'm just saying, if you want another crack at it, if you buy a Wicked Good Gaming ugly sweater for charity, um, again, it's that specific ugly sweater, we are going to be drawing one name, uh, anybody who's purchased, and there haven't, I'm going to be completely transparent, there hasn't been a lot yet, um, so your chances to win are really high. If you buy one of these sweaters, we will be picking a name at random from everybody that bought one of these sweaters. And we will be uh, awarding one person one of these jerseys as well. Um, so if you buy a, a charity ugly sweater from our shop, wickedgoodgaming.com slash shop, you are officially entered for a chance to win uh, an exclusive Wicked Good Gaming esports jersey. Um, whatever size you want, you can get your uh, you know your handle or your gamer tag or whatever and your number on the back. 
Um, it's really great. Um, I can't wait to get ours in. You know, we're going to have them in in just a couple weeks now. Um, I believe they're shipping out on the 18th. Um, so, and then everybody who's, who's waiting for theirs, I will be shipping them out to you personally. You get to get mail from me, which is not a privilege that many people get to do. So buy a, uh, buy an ugly sweater. The link is in the chat right now, wickedgoodgaming.com slash shop. If you buy one, um, on that Friday that we make the donation or I think on that Thursday, um, cause we can do it live on the show. We will draw the name live and everybody who has purchased one of those sweaters will be entered to win. So you can't win if you don't play. Um, I think the sweaters are like 40 bucks. The jerseys are significantly more expensive than that. Um, and we are willing to give you one for free just because we care. Um, and we want you to, uh, we want you to support a great cause. So do that and you enter for a chance to win one of those jerseys. Um, fire, yeah, fire jerseys too. Those things are sick. Who knows? I mean, if, 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 if you guys really want to twist my arm, you know, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a little bit more with these, but, um, you got to buy a sweater. Um, you got to support a great cause. Toys for Tots is an absolutely incredible charity. I know that we were just raising money for Movember, and I really do appreciate all the generosity, and I know it can be a lot, um, but we really rely on you guys here. We've, we're, we're coming up on like 450 views or downloads an episode, um, so even if you're not in our Discord or in our, on our Twitch, go to our shop. It's wicked. More than that. More shop. than that now. We're getting, we're getting several hundred people coming back and viewing the VODs on Twitch, which, by the way... I put them all up on YouTube, youtube.com backslash Wicked Gaming, but people are coming to Twitch as well. Several hundred people coming to watch the VODs. So yeah. if you're one of those people, much If you buy it. one of these sweaters, it's in the chat right now. That's the WGG Charity Ugly Sweater. There are two of these in my household right now, uh, and they are beautiful. They're comfortable. They're soft. Um, and guess what? If you're having any ugly sweater Zoom parties, it's not too late to get one. You get expedited shipping on that bad Larry. Bang, you're going to have that shit before Christmas. And you get entered for a chance to win a fucking sick jersey. Uh, so what do you got to lose? Huh? What do you get to lose? For the kids, man. For the do kids. For the kids. Do it for the kids. Don't make me do some ridiculous shit on stream and cover myself in chocolate sauce and shit if people really don't start donating because I will. I, I refuse to let this fucking charity uh, fail. So Sea Dog said, what color should you get? I recommend red if you don't have any other. Uh, he goes, clip it. Don't fucking clip that. Uh <laughs> Um, what color should I get? I would rec- I would recommend red or green if you like this. Uh, my wife has the blue one. That's upstairs. I'm not going to go get it uh, right now, but the blue one is also really nice. But red and green is festive, but it's also available in purple uh, because, you know, branding. Uh, but that's all mm. I got. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Make sure to, you know, chip in. We try not to ask a lot from the community when it comes to, you know, this type of stuff when it comes to charities and whatnot but we understand we know and understand that everybody likes to be a part of this stuff everybody likes to give back and this is the giving season you know there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now where there's a lot of people losing their jobs a lot of people laid off there's a lot of people a lot of kids right now that just might not have that opportunity this year to get something and we want to help give back so if you would like to give back it's wicked gaming backslash shop or wicked and you look for the gimme the loot, gimme the loot shirt. All of the all of the proceeds of that that isn't going to our uh, merch platform goes straight to Toys for Tots. So it's a great cause. You'll get entered in to win a jersey. So if you've already bought a sweatshirt or a sweater or a hoodie, or whatever it is, you're already on the list. Don't worry about it. But if you would like to get on the list, buy a shirt. Donate some money. The deadline yeah, every, is this. Every this, bit helps. Is, the deadline is 8.30 p.m. <clears throat> 8.30 p.m. Next, uh, next Thursday when we air our next show. Uh, so that's 8.30 then, p.m. on the 17th. That's our deadline. And then, you know, if this goes well, we might have more. You know, we might have some more goodies coming, for, you know, coming afterwards. So perhaps build it up a little bit. Um, anyways, shout out to our sponsors at Thrive Fantasy. Use promo code WGG. If you put in $50 and you use promo code WGG at sign up, you'll get a free 50 bucks. It's that simple. If you have questions about, I don't know, maybe any props that you want to bet on uh, Counter-Strike, hit me up. I'll give you the fucking inside scoop. I'm not going to guarantee you anything, but I'll be there for you. Uh, Bob also does a bunch of good uh, NFL props too. Does. Um, 
You could check out all the written content at wickedgoodgaming.com. You could check us out live. Uh, I've been going live like three to four times a week at Wicked Gaming, twitch.tv backslash Wicked Good Gaming. Uh, we're going to be live tomorrow night, co-streaming the TGAs. We're going to be doing some commentary over everything. We're going to make some comment, uh, content off of this. You could catch all the pre-recorded show on all podcast platforms. If you if you have a specific podcast platform that we aren't on that you like to use, let us know. We'll figure it out. You could check us out on all social media platforms at Wicked Good Gaming, except for Twitter. It is at Wicked Good Games. You could check out all the video content at youtube.com backslash Wicked Good Gaming. Um, what else? What else? Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Join our Discord. Home. Join our Discord. You know, come join the community. Come be a part of the community, huh? And if you're watching this VOD, I put the I'm I'm putting them all up on, on YouTube. You can watch it there too. I like I like the engagement. Um, yeah, tune in tomorrow for the TGAs. We're gonna get some good content around that, and yeah, we'll see you guys next week for episode two eleven. I think that's it. See you then. Mwah.